Hello everybody and welcome to my review of the 1933 original film of King Kong directed by Miriam C. Cooper and Ernest B. Schoedstack. So, um, yes, you're probably wondering why I've randomly decided to review King Kong. Basically because I forgot to review it last year. <laughs> For the release of Kong Skull Island last year. Um, I reviewed the Peter Jackson King Kong, uh, the remake, and I said I was going to review the other movies, but I never got a chance to do it. Uh, so I managed to find the Blu-ray of the original Kong, and I've just watched it. So I thought I'd bring you my review now. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, King Kong. And uh, I'm aware there is a 70s version, so I'm going to try and watch that one for you and review that. Then I've reviewed all the Kong films. At least all the relevant ones. <laughs> so, uh, King Kong. Basically, the story is... Um, if you've seen the Peter Jackson film, it's pretty much the same story as that. Um, just shorter. <laughs> uh, it basically centres around uh, Carl Denham, who is this movie director. He's making his next big movie, but nobody wants to work with him because he's a, a prick, <laughs> basically. Um, he doesn't give a shit about anyone else but himself, and he goes ahead... Um, making his film without really the studio approving his film and he stumbles across Anne Darrow who's um, down on her luck she's suffering from the Great Depression in, in 1930s New York um, she's out of work she almost tries to steal some food and then he sort of gives her a meal and then talks her into being in the movie and she ventures on she goes on board the ship with, with him she, she meets um Jack Driscoll, or John Driscoll, or whatever you want to call him, um, who is a sailor, and they fall in love. And then the, they all stumble across this island known as Skull Island, and they encounter the beast known as Kong, uh, who is, well, worshipped by these natives, and offered up, and Anne is offered up to Kong as a sacrifice. And then it pretty much is a rescue mission. Um, the crew, the sailors, go in, in search of... Anne um, to bring her back and then they end up trapping Kong and bringing him to New York and yeah that's pretty much it and then obviously we know how it all ends so that is essentially your plot of King Kong okay the original King Kong now um, I'd never seen this movie before today uh, I'd grown up watching the Peter Jackson remake of 2005. That was my first introduction to King Kong. Um, I saw that in cinema. Um, the three-hour the three hour one. <laughs> it's double the length of this one. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm sure you all know which one I'm talking about. But um, watching this version, it's, it's very different. While the story is essentially the same... The uh, certain things are a little bit different, which is interesting. Um, this original film uh, obviously is very old. It's made in the, the 1930s, 1933 to be exact. And um, I think it's a, a very, very good film. I mean, it's, it's hard to deny King Kong as an absolute classic. Um, is it a masterpiece? I wouldn't say... Not really, no. Uh, I'd say, to be honest... Um, it is a masterpiece on a technical level. It, it is a technical masterpiece for its time. In terms of the script, not as much. Uh, but I won't deny that it is a classic. And I can see why Peter Jackson was inspired by this movie. This is the movie that Peter Jackson saw and thought, Wow, I want to become a filmmaker. Uh, originally, he wanted to become a special effects supervisor because of the stop motion animation. And obviously this film would go on to inspire such people as like Ray Harryhausen uh, you know, who would develop all of the stop motion films that were to come uh, such as Jason and the Argonauts and, and, all, and all of that sort of stuff that would... King Kong was the prelude to that. So to, to see how it kind of began is great because this film revolutionised stop motion animation for film. Um, it is spectacular to watch. It is absolutely spectacular. Um, the way that they've animated Kong and the dinosaurs and all of the stop motion figures is superb. It still looks great to this day. It is dated now, yes, but um, it's just very impressive for the time. And I, I can imagine audiences really, really loving this film when it came out because of how technically impressive it is. 
Um, and that is that is definitely true. It is it is a technical marvel. And again, Peter Jackson saw it and went, "Wow!" You know, he he'd always tried to make his own version. Um, but then he, it, you know, uh, uh, there was a time when he was going to make it in the 90s, but then the, the plug pulled. Uh, but then, luckily enough, we know what happened then. He made Lord of the Rings. Then after that, he could do pretty much anything he wanted, and then he made King Kong. But um, going back to this version, um, the story is essentially the same. Uh, it's, it's, you know, but the, in terms of, I think the main character is more Carl Denham. I think they've kind of made Denham more of the, well, I say not main character, it's weird because I think at the, at the same time Anne is the main protagonist, um, but Denim is kind of focused on in the beginning as well. Um, it's really interesting. I mean, they they don't spend as much time on the characters in this film. That's where I think this film kind of falters a little bit. Um, it doesn't damage the movie too much because I think it's it's a spectacular thrill ride, and it is impressive visually. And there's some very very good, very well directed scenes, but um, it doesn't take its time to really develop the characters. I think other, I mean, there's obviously the main ones like Anne, uh, Carl, and Jack. Those are the main three that I've really focused on, and obviously Kong to a certain degree. Um, the rest of them are kind of just there, like all like the captain and the crew. They're not as developed as they are in the Jackson film, um, which is fair enough. I mean, they're only secondary characters anyway, but still. This film kind of, it's it's very brisk, I'll say that much. It, that's the big difference between this and the Jackson film, is that this is shorter, much shorter. Um, I don't have a problem with the Jackson film being three hours long, but some people do. Um, I can understand why people would prefer this film over the remake, because it is much shorter and is brisker. Um, you get the essential story, you know, in one hour, 45 minutes, and that's how long this film is. Um... I think the look of Skull Island is absolutely fantastic and the way they've got the paintings, the matte paintings in the background behind the figures and the fight sequences with Kong are great, like when Kong fights the, the, the T-Rex, that's great, that is incredible and just like the remake, he he breaks its jaw and kills it, oh god, it's uh, really, really, I mean the spectacle is there and, excuse me, the way that they incorporate the sense of scale it's brilliant, like, um, with the use of the blue screen and stuff, um, that's all very good for the time. Y yes, it is dated now, but you have to appreciate it for the time. Um, what I do think this film has is some great performances. Um, for example, we'll go to the one and only Fay Ray, you know, the late great Fay Ray, rest in peace. She plays Anne Darrow, the original Anne Darrow, and she is great. Yes, she does scream a lot. <laughs> but that was part of the character. Um, she does she does scream quite a lot, but um, that's you know again it's part of the character. I don't I don't think people should give us such a hard time for that. You know, I think she does a very good job interacting with Kong because Kong is kind of a, a you know a big figure you know a big sort of like monster figure. She has to always look up and look scared most of the time. Um, this film doesn't doesn't have the relationship between Anne and Kong in quite the same way as the, the Jackson film does. In the Jackson film, Anne and Kong form a sort of a strong bond, like a like a platonic friendship. Um, they care for each other. This film only works one way. Kong cares for Anne. Anne doesn't care for Kong in this film. Anne just sees Kong as a monster. Whereas in the remake, Anne sees Kong as the complete opposite. <laughs> And, and then sees um, Denim and the humans as, as the monster. Um, so this film, obviously, um, I, I think this film would have benefited from that. So I think that's where the remake actually improves, is actually where you get the sense that Anne is the one that sees that this creature is just not a monster. He looks like a monster, but he's just, he's lonely. He's deprived. He's, he's almost quite depressed, really. I mean, and this, because he's the way he's been treated. Like, people just attack him because he's a monster. Um, whereas this film, it's not really <coughs> as fleshed out as the remake. And that's kind of where it suffers for me. I, I do feel like the script kind of needed... To, I feel like this, this film needed to be a little bit longer. Just so we could flesh out the characters and really kind of understand the motivations. It, it, at times it does feel a little rushed. It feels like 
a, sh a longer film condensed, like really cut down. There are some great moments on the Skull Island, though, when the crew get on the island and then they come across all the dinosaurs and the monsters and stuff. And the natives all are very good. Um, but it's it just, this from the, from the script point of view, the script needed a, a bit of work, I think. Um, I mean, there are some nice heartfelt moments, but I do think that what makes this film suffer is there is a lack of heart. There's a lack of a beating emotional heart, which is where the remake improves. Is that it gives it gives the story a beating heart. This I'm not saying this doesn't have heartfelt moments. It does. I mean, you have a sort of a minor romance between um, Driscoll and Anne. I'm just going to call him Driscoll because I don't know if, the, if if we're actually meant to call him John or Jack. But I think they call him Jack, then they call him John. It's like what? Anyway, so Driscoll and Anne <laughs> have a brief romance, like they do in the remake. That's very good. That's that's nice. That's a nice and heartfelt moment. Um, but other than that, there's not much in it, really. There's not much heart in the movie. I mean, you to an extent, you kind of care about Kong, but not as much as, I think, the, the Jackson film. Because you don't spend as much time getting to know Kong as a character. He's just a big monster that kind of is attacking things. And there's not much... There's no narrative structure here, really. It's just, you know... It, it is a bit of a, a bit of a special effects showcase... Um, I'm not trying to shit on this film. I don't think it's a. I don't think it's like bad at all. I think it's a great movie. It is a very entertaining film, but from a script point of view, it needs a lot of work. It needed. It needed to feel a bit more structured narratively, and it, it just kind of like a lot of things kind of happen uh, just for no reason, just because because they can, and obviously for the spectacle. Um, there's not as much emotion in this story as I would have liked. I think Jackson's version is, is superior simply because of the emotion of the story. Yes, the special effects are, it's very, they're two very different films. The Jackson film is more modern in the sense that there's more advanced special effects. In this movie, it's more dated, but you still get the essential story. Um, I really like Faye Ray as Anne Darrow. I like Robert Armstrong as Carl Denham. He's very good. Um, uh, very different to Jack Black's portrayal. Um, Bruce Cabot as Driscoll, he's, he's, he's very good. Um, Frank Riker as the captain, Captain Englehorn, he's good, although he doesn't get as much to do. Um, and, yeah, <laughs> there's not much I can say about this film. I think the music's good too. Um, the production design is fantastic, especially in New York as well. When we see those scenes in New York, they are, they are particularly good. Um, I will say that the film is briskly paced. It doesn't drag at all, and it's much quicker than Jackson's films. If you had trouble watching the Peter Jackson film, because it is three hours long, I would totally understand if you preferred this version. Um, but for me, my money, simply for the emotion, Jackson's version is my favourite. But I do really like this film, because it is revolutionary for the time that it was made. And, you know, on a technical level, it is so impressive for the 1930s, but just from a script standpoint, I wanted more heart, I wanted more heart, I wanted to care about the characters more than I did, um, I'm not saying I didn't care, I just, I just didn't feel that, you know, that sense of like, oh my god, no, like that emotion, you know, and I wanted to care more about Kong when he died, and I kind of didn't really, I thought, oh wow, that's, I mean, it was impressive when he died, like, this, the, obviously the final climax of all the Empire State Building, is just fantastic. I mean, very differently done in Jackson's version, and obviously the ending is, you know, interesting in a way, but it has more heart and more meaning in the Jackson film, but this version is still great. And obviously the final line when Denham says, you know, it, was, it wasn't the planes, it was beauty that killed the beast. That's still done very well. Um, I think it's a very, very interesting film. but And it was good to watch it, because I, I wanted to compare it. And there are some nice... Um, Sort of references and similar lines uh, in both versions of the film. Obviously, the, the remake definitely um, reworked some of the lines <laughs> and stuff. Um, yeah, and it's 104 minutes, so it flies by. It's a very entertaining film. I could watch this for a ton of fun. It's another version of King Kong. <laughs> what can I say? Um, but yeah, it just lacks that beating emotional heart that really would make it the top of its game. But I'm I'm still gonna give King Kong a very strong nine out of ten.
the original King Kong. Um, as I say, yeah, sorry, sorry fans of this film. I do prefer Jackson's film, but don't kill me. Look, Peter Jackson is my favourite film director. I'm gonna, you know, likelihood is I'm going to love his films, or at least most of them. I mean, I haven't seen The Lovely Bones, but I haven't heard good things about it, so I will have to try and review that one day, as it is Peter Jackson. Okay, uh, yeah, <laughs> but it's for the 1933 King Kong, you know, long may it live, Kong is king. So, yes, and uh, Peter Jackson himself owns a animatronic uh, of Kong from the, from the 30s film, which is interesting, and that obviously very, very much helped them, you know, making the one, uh, making his one. Um, it's a very inspirational film on many levels. So yeah, um, the 1933 King Kong, that's my review of it. Please leave your comments down below, let me know what you think, and stay tuned for future reviews. So until then, thank you guys all for watching, and as always, I'm Mr. Tyler Sullivan. See ya.